What is up CrossFitters? In today's video, I just want to take a look at uh, an article, a page. Um, I've heard about intuitive eating for a while and I've never actually looked up what it really means or what, I mean, I can intuitively guess what intuitive eating means. I don't think it's that complicated, but uh, on the, the main page that pops up for this type of, or this philosophy or the style of nutrition, or maybe lack thereof, uh, what does it say and what does it, what's the information that it's giving out? Um, as you can see, I'm actually dressed today. I don't have, I'm not going shirtless because uh, I actually, it's going to be one of my last days in Nova Scotia and uh, it's supposed to downpour rain tomorrow. So I'm going to be going out and soaking up the last little bits of the East Coast before I head out. But before I do that, let's jump into this article and see what it has to say. Um, so off of the main page, it says... Intuitive eating is a self-care framework which integrates instinct, emotion, and rational thought and was created by two dietitians, Evelyn Tribal and Elise Resch, 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 something like that, in 1995. Intuitive eating is a weight-inclusive, evidence-based model, okay, with a validated assessment scale and over 100 studies to date. All right, so far so good. Let's see, it's principles and dynamic process, which include 10, sorry, it's a personal and dynamic process, which includes 10 principles. Let's go run through it. And then I think it actually has like a, a more detailed breakdown. So we'll go through the detailed breakdown right after. So it's personal and dynamic process. Reject the diet mentality. Honor your hunger. I'm interested to know what that means. Make peace with food. I guess we're at war with food. Challenge the food police. I think all the police are being challenged right now. So this is just one more police challenge to dismantle, to defund. Let's defund the food police. Respect your fullness. Okay, whatever that means. Discover the satisfaction factor. Honor your feelings without using food. That makes sense. I mean, you don't let your emotions and your feelings dictate when you're going to eat. Um... Respect your body. Yeah. Okay. Exercise. Feel the difference. Exercise is always good. We'll see what they have to say about exercise. And the final one is honor your health with gentle nutrition. I'm interested to know what gentle nutrition is. Principles work in two key ways. By helping you cultivate attunement to the physical sensations that arise from within your body to get both your biological and psychological needs met. And... Removing the obstacles and disruptors to attunement, which usually come from the mind in the form of rules, beliefs, and thoughts. Because who needs rules? Anarchy. Wait. Anarchy. For the win. <laughs> Process of intuitive eating is a practice which honors both physical and mental health. I mean, my previous video I was talking about the importance of physical and mental health. Intuitive eating is aligned with health at every size. Okay, this is where we, we start to part ways. Because the pursuit of intentional weight loss is a failed paradigm, which creates health problems including weight stigma, weight cycling, and eating disorders. All bodies deserve dignity and respect. I'm all for loving your body, being happy in your body, being happy with what you have, but not to the point of being unhealthy and not to the point of promoting an unhealthy lifestyle. Now, unhealthy lifestyles go both ways. There are people that are super addicted to healthy foods and over-exercising and, and they go too far to that other end of the spectrum. So they end up just burning the candle at both ends and uh, burning out, maybe having heart problems and issues because they're almost, almost too fit. They, they, they don't have that balance. Everything is about balance ultimately. But if we go with your intuition and how you feel, everybody feels differently and what makes me full and what makes you full, if, if there's two of us and what makes me full is less than what makes somebody of a similar size to me full, then if they end up eating more because they're not at that satiation point, then five, 10 years down the road, depending on how our metabolisms go, and they're consuming more calories and I'm consuming less, who do you think is going to end up being healthier, fitter, 
uh, or who do you think is going to be more overweight, right? So the intuitive element, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what they have to say about it, right? Okay, let's look at the 10 principles of intuitive eating in more in detail. Reject the diet mentality. Throw out the diet book. Get angry at diet culture that promotes weight loss and lies that have been led uh, led you to feel as if you were a failure every time a new diet let's get rid of that stopped working and you gained back all of the weight. Diet, anything you eat is a diet, right? So if uh, if I eat a bunch of burgers and fries and pizza and beer, that technically is still a diet if that's my normal routine. Um, if you want to lose weight, unfortunately, it's just the, the way it has to go. You have to look at your food and you have to look at your intake. If you're not calories in versus calories out, you're just, uh, you're, you're going to keep the weight on or you're going to add more. So yeah, I mean, a diet is something that you need to be doing for a lifetime. I don't agree with people that jump on the fads, like the ketogenic diets and the Adkin diets and all these fads that they think are going to help them lose weight because they're not sustainable. They're not things that they're actually going to stick with forever. A diet should be something that you're going to stick with forever for life. And then, yeah, you're allowed to have your cheat thing here or there. You're allowed to have your pizza, your beer. But those are just, those are external components that you're allowed to throw in from time to time. They shouldn't be the crux of your diet. If you're having pizza and burgers and beer and everything every day, and that's an unhealthy diet. Honor your hunger. Keep your body biologically fed with adequate energy and carbohydrates. Otherwise, you can trigger a primal drive to overeat. Once you reach the moment of excess hunger, all intentions of moderate conscious eating are fleeting and irrelevant. Learning to honor this first biological signal sets the stage for rebuilding trust in yourself and in food. I didn't realize I had to trust food. I didn't realize it was a sentient being that I had to, that we had to cultivate a relationship with. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, Low calorie dense foods are going to be your friend when you're when it comes to honoring your hunger. If you want to eat a lot and not gain weight and not become obese or morbidly obese or completely unhealthy, then you need to be finding foods that are going to fill you up. They're going to keep that that hunger uh, uh, sense uh, uh, satiated. That are going to be low calorie, so you're not putting on weight. And that's really the uh, the idea between for me would be the honor your hunger still a weird way to phrase it make peace with food because we're at war with it call a truce stop the food fight give yourself unconditional permission to eat if you tell yourself that you can't or shouldn't have a particular food it can lead to intense feelings of deprivation that build into uncontrollable cravings and often binging when you finally give in to your for for to your forbidden foods eating will be experienced with such intensity it usually results in last supper overeating and overwhelming guilt. <sighs> Man. Well, I mean, you there's balance, right? But if you're giving yourself permission to eat and you're going off of intuition and you're 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 allowed to eat until you feel full, you're going to overeat anyway. If I like chips, I'm going to eat the whole bag of chips. Once I start going, it doesn't, it's going, once I have one, it's going to lead into the next and then you're not stopping until it's all gone. So I don't see how this makes any sense. Um, if I see a big piece of cheesecake, I'm going to eat the whole cheesecake. I'm not eating half and then saving half for tomorrow, right? I'm not cutting those calories in half. If it's in front of me, it's going to happen. And to ask somebody to to not have that happen is is pretty much impossible. So I don't know what they mean by this. If if you're going to end up, you know, maybe instead of you deprive yourself of chips for so long that eventually you eat two bags of chips. The main thing with this is you got to keep, if, if you know you have a weakness for something, keep it out of the house. Don't buy it at the grocery store. Don't go pick up five bags of chips. Or if you are used to eating five bag of chips, just buy one and be happy with one. But you're ultimately, it would be good to cut it all out completely. And once again, focus on low calorie dense foods. Challenge the food police. Scream aloud no to thoughts in your head that declare you're 
you declare you are good for eating minimal calories or bad because you ate a piece of chocolate cake. The food police monitor the, uh, the unreasonable rules that diet culture has created. The police station is housed deep in your psyche and it's loudspeaker. Blah, 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 sounds negative. This is your conscience, though. I mean, if you know you shouldn't have something, you know you shouldn't have it. And you shouldn't feel bad for having a piece of chocolate cake every now and then. But it shouldn't be something that you have a lot of. And this sort of idea means it gives you justification to basically eat whatever you want, whenever you want, even though it says that you should be trying to avoid the cravings or that, you know, I don't know. This is, this is a little much. So if your conscience is telling you you shouldn't have something, it could be right. And it sometimes is a good voice to listen to. The Japanese uh, discovered sat the satisfaction factor. The Japanese have the wisdom to keep pleasure as one of their goals of healthy living and our compulsion to comply with diet culture. We often overlook one of the most basic gifts of, ex of existence, the pleasure and satisfaction that can be found in the eating experience. Yeah, I mean, you should, satis you should be satisfied with your food. You should like the foods you're eating. Otherwise, you're not going to stick to a, a diet that's going to keep the weight off. But the Japanese is probably not a good example to go with because they're also a culture of control. They're a culture of order. They're a culture of rules. And that's why if you go to Japan, you're not going to see, aside from like sumo wrestlers, you're not going to see a whole lot of people that are morbidly obese and unhealthy because they are about the satisfaction, but in proportion and in balance. And that's ultimately what it's about. The satisfaction should come from balance. And working your body, working your mind, and eating properly all work together to give you that balance. Feel your fullness. Okay, I was interested in this one. In order to honor your fullness, you need to trust that you will give yourself the foods that you desire. Listen for the body signals that tell you that you are no longer hungry. Observe the signs that show that you're comfortably full. Pause in the middle of eating and ask yourself how the food tastes and what your current hunger level is. Okay, so this goes back to what I said before. The feeling your fullness, to me, is that's not a good way of gauging your how you should be eating. Because if you're a if you're a competitive eater and your level of fullness is just some extraordinary amount, like you need to eat a pound or two pounds or three pounds of food to feel satiated, then that's ultimately going to lead to more weight gain and more unhealthy. Uh, uh, fallout, right? And then other people, it's the opposite. If if they only take a, if it only takes them like a scoop of rice and some uh, little piece of chicken to get full, then they're going to be on the other end of the spectrum where they're going too far towards the anorexia uh, level, but too thin, and they need to find ways of getting more calories in, getting more uh, nutrients so that they can stay healthy. So the whole fullness thing, I mean. That's very subjective and very, that wouldn't be an element that I would want to follow with. That wouldn't be something that I would use as my, my metric for, uh, for healthy eating. Cope with your emotions with kindness. First, recognize that food restrictions both physically and mentally can, and in a self-trigger, loss of control. Find kind ways to comfort, nurture, distract, and resolve your issues. Anxiety, loneliness, boredom, anger are emotions we all experience throughout life. Which has its own trigger. Yeah, food won't fix any of these feelings. That's I agree with this part. It's going to comfort you in the short term, distract you from pain, even numb you. But food won't solve the problem. If anything, eating for an emotional hunger may only make you feel worse in the long run. You ultimately have to deal with the source of the emotion. Okay, I agree with this point. I agree with point seven because yeah, it, eating to cope with your emotions and your feelings is. Is only going to make you. It's, it's a vicious cycle that's only going to lead you to eat more and then feel worse about yourself and then eat more and feel worse about yourself. It just it's a never ending cycle. So I know I agree with this. Yeah, you know, don't cope with with your emotions through food. Respect your body. Accept your genetic blueprint, and I agree with this part. Just as a person with a shoe size of eight would not expect to realistically squeeze into a size six. It is equally futile and uncomfortable to have a similar expectation about your body size, but mostly respect your body so you can feel better about who you are 
It's hard to reject the diet mentality if you're unrealistic and overly critical of your body size or shape. All bodies deserve dignity. I, I agree uh, partly with this one where it's just um, where you can't expect to get the results of some of the people that you see online. Like when you watch these videos of these super shredded dudes or these super beautiful women and they say, follow my booty program or follow my, my upper body and lower body workout and my split and this is my diet and, and you can expect these results. Probably not. Because first of all, you have to have the the motivation to stick with that for a long period of time. And a lot of people don't have that. And even they don't. They're, there's a lot of Photoshop going on, a lot of uh, finding the right angles, finding the right lighting. So they don't even look like that all the time. Not to mention their genetics and the supplements, the extra supplements they're taking that they don't tell you about. And that's an, that's an issue of the fitness industry where they... Yeah, they put these false expectations on people and people think that the, a lot of these results are possible and they're not. So don't don't get sucked into that when you're when you're doing your diet, when you're doing your workout routine. Focus on you and improve yourself. Don't look at these people and say this is a possibility. I look at the rock and go, well, there's no way and and I could have all the drugs, all the food, all the sleep, all the whatever I want, I'll never look like the rock. There's a genetic limit that we all have. Movement, feel the difference, forget militant exercise, just get active and feel the difference. Shift your focus on how it feels to move your body rather than the calorie burning effect of exercise. Focus on how you feel from working out, such as energized, blah, 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 rolling out of bed for a brisk morning walk. Yeah, I mean, I want people to move. Movement's great. Get started. Just do what you can to start off with. As you get better, make that intensity greater. Increase that intensity, make it more difficult. And if you can do that, over time, you're going to get amazing changes. You're going to get amazing results. So don't start off with militant exercise, but as you get stronger and better, you might have to move more towards higher intensity. Don't just stick with what you started off with when it came to your exercise. Always, always look at improvement. Always look to get better. <clears throat> honor your health. Gentle nutrition. Okay, I wanted to know what gentle nutrition was. Make food choices that honor your health and taste buds while making you feel good. Remember that you don't have to eat perfectly to be healthy. You will not suddenly get a nutri nutrient deficiency or become unhealthy from one snack when it's what you eat. Can yeah, I mean that's true. You know, don't don't beat yourself up if you have a if you have a cookie every now and then or a piece of pizza or a beer. But the these last few points make a lot more sense. But then it's those first points that throw you off because they're they're kind of contradictory to each other. Because if you're eating based on how you feel and not wanting to feel guilty that gives you carte blanche that gives you an excuse to go and and eat to not monitor what you're actually eating and if you're if your goal is to lose weight which is most people's goal then you need to know what you're eating because no ma no amount of exercise is going to outdo you know they say you, you no exercise is going to outdo a bad diet and abs are made in the kitchen and all of that and it's true. I mean, I know that from my own experience. I lift lots of heavy weights and and power lift and do all that, but it, I had to add in the cardio and I had to cut back my calories to drop all the excess fat that I was starting to store and put on. And yeah, it sucks and it's not fun and people want to be able to eat everything they they want all the time. But that's not realistic if you want to be in shape, if you want to be healthy and live a long life. So, I do have an issue with with this intuitiveness of of just go how it feels like that's getting a little more pseudoscience -y hippie to me where, where you're basically giving yourself an excuse to eat whatever you want. And that's going to ultimately lead to weight gain calories in calories out. And we all have a certain caloric limit depending on what medications we're taking our genetics, how much we exercise, um, what diseases or illnesses we have that are attacking our immune system. So we all have different limits, but we have to find that limit if we want to lose weight and, maintain a certain level. So, I mean, I get, I, I don't, I don't necessarily really agree with intuitive eating from what the description says, but the thing that really bothers me is this, it says get certified, get a certification. 
So they want you to pay. And this might lead into something that I want to talk about, which is um, things I dislike with the fitness industry, my fr frustrations with the fitness industry, snake oil of the industry. And this is one thing where certifications are required or getting thrown out for literally everything. And something like this doesn't make any sense to me why you would need a certification. So I need to go pay you to become certified to tell people to just eat whatever they want and to not feel guilty and to not count calories and not worry about the macros and not worry about how much protein and carbs and whatever. You want me to pay you for that, that privilege for me to be able to, to, um, to be able to do this with my clients. And I, I can't stand that about the fitness industry where everything becomes a monopoly. Everything becomes, how can we milk money out of trainers? How can we milk money out of the public for information that should be either free or easily accessible and you, you shouldn't need a certification for. So anyway, that's my look at this, uh, this intuitive eating. Uh, let me know what you think. What, what's your opinion on intuitive eating? Are you all in for it or, or do you think it's a little bit, a little bit of rubbish like I do? Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. Track your calories. Don't just eat whatever you feel like. And uh, if you like my material, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. David out. Thank you.